So yeah, iPhone is finally here and most of you, like me, would update your iPhone to the latest iOS 15 which comes with a bunch of new features so you'll probably discover them as you use the phone, you know, here and there. But this channel is not about that. This channel is all about, you know, hidden tips and tricks that people would normally wouldn't find or it would take a long time for them to figure out. So for example, the new live text tool is not only available when you're dealing with photos, you can use it to scan documents and take screenshots as well. Similarly, the drag and drop feature not only works for text, but you can also drag and drop multiple images, yeah, multiple images between various apps. Sounds fun? Well, I've compiled a list of all the best iOS tips and tricks, along with some new additional features that can be used with your iPhone efficiently. So without any further ado, let's begin. Before we begin though, let's see how you can actually install iOS 15 because not everyone's tech savvy, especially old people. So this is how you actually do it on your iOS 6s or phones that are later than that. Now open the settings app on your iPhone, swipe down and tap general and then choose software update, tap download and if iOS 14.8 appears at the top, look at the bottom and choose upgrade to iOS 15 and then tap download and install to get your latest iOS 15. One of the most powerful iOS 15 feature that has been updated is live text. Let me show you how. Instead of just typing it manually, simply long press inside a text field as if you're going to you know, copy and paste like you normally would, you'll see a scan text button. You might also see a button that uses just a scan icon, which looks like a piece of paper with brackets around it. So just line up the camera and the text just right. You'll see a live preview of the text your iPhone identifies and then ready to place into your document. So tap insert button when you're ready and the best part is it works for everything. If you have a screenshot of an existing old photo, you can just pull out the text from that screenshot as well. Now Apple has made a ton of changes to Safari on the iPhone cause you know, right off the bat you'd notice that the URL bar is usually at the top but now it's at the bottom and there's no direct way to close all tabs at once cause now it's a bit different than it used to be. While some of these changes are welcoming, it won't be ideal for everyone. Thankfully, Apple does give you the option to reverse these changes. So when using the Safari on the iPhone, tap the capital A and small A button on the address bar. A menu will pop up where you'll see a new option labeled show top address bar. Tap it to move the address bar to the top again. Here you'll also find an option to show the desktop layer on the website, which is a bit hidden under the settings in my opinion. Similarly, to close all Safari tabs at once, tap and hold the tap button to bring out the pop-up menu. Also, do note, if you just tap the tabs button, then it won't show you the option to close all tabs. Now you would see an option to close all current tabs or even all the tabs and etc. So you probably know this already, but just like iPad, you can now drag and drop, you know, text, documents and pictures across apps if you've got a phone that can handle iOS 15. So for example, say if you want to forward a text that you got from your bank to your friend on iMessage or your dad, you can just simply drag and drop the text. It's that easy. In fact, it even works for images. So the other day, I wanted to save a few cute cat pictures. Yeah, I'm a cat person, even though I have a dog. So I can just open Google image search and say, you know, search for cute cats. Now don't tap on a picture to open it full screen. Instead, place a finger on the photo and then start dragging your finger across the screen without lifting your finger. Now when the thumbnail starts to float over the rest of the photos, switch back to the messages app or the photos app. You'll see a green circle with a plus sign in it to show you the thumbnail indicating that you can lift your finger and the photo will be placed in the text field. And that one's ready to send. And one of the biggest changes to iOS 15 is the fact that you can now actually FaceTime with your friends on Android and Windows, which is crazy, but it's in a good place to start. So on iOS 15, simply just open the FaceTime app and you'll see a new create link option on the top. So just copy that link to clipboard and share it with your friends. This way they can join the FaceTime calls from Windows, Android, Chromebook. Previously FaceTime was only available on iOS and Mac. I mean, that's obvious if you have an Apple device. However, this doesn't mean your friends can start a FaceTime call from an Android or Windows PC. A FaceTime link can only be generated from an iPhone, iPad or Mac, but anyone with the link can join the call. It's not perfect, but it's a good place to start. Now there's tons of other feature additions to FaceTime, including the option to blur your background with portrait mode. 
voice isolation mode, wide spectrum mode. But to keep this video short and to the point, I'll not include them. However, you can check them out as well. So iOS 15 adds account recovery, which is a new feature that can help you if you lose your phone in the rarest occasions, or if you forgot your password, or even if you got locked out of your phone because you typed in a password or forgot the ones that you had. In the settings menu, select your Apple ID and then select account recovery in the password and security section. From there, you can add a new recovery contact. So as long as they're over 13 years old and also use iOS 15, should you be locked out of your iOS device, you can visit a friend in the same account recovery page in the settings app. Just select your name and then it'll give you the recovery key whenever you're ready to attempt another login. Now this one is one of those hidden iOS features that has a big usability impact. So many users found that the iOS 14 picker was less convenient and less intuitive to use with the ability to select the hours or minutes. In iOS 15, however, instead of endlessly scrolling through in the time picker menu, you can now just tap on it and add the desired time using the number pad on the keyboard. Small, but a needed trick. Another big addition to iOS 15 is Private Relay, which we talked about on this channel before. It's kind of like a VPN, but not really quite. Say for example, if I have the Private Relay option enabled from the settings, anything I browse on the Safari won't be encrypted and secure. In fact, in some countries, it can even help you unblock your restrictions. For example, Playboy.com is blocked in my country, but if I turn on the private relay from the settings, as you can see, the website does open without any issue. In fact, even hides your IP, which is kind of cool. Private relay isn't free though. It comes bundled with iCloud Pass. So if you've purchased iCloud storage or have an Apple One subscription, then private relay would be already active for you. You can check the status by just navigating to settings, Apple ID, iCloud, Private Relay, turn on. So those were some of the best new iOS 15 features that are now available on the iPhone. There's tons more which we could talk about, but we can keep going on forever. But those were the best ones that we found at SmartNest Proxy were quite useful and helpful. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section below. While you're at it, check out SmartNestProxy.com if you're keen to unblock geo-restricted content on sites like Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV+, HBO Max, because HBO Max is only available in the US, so you can't really watch it outside. But with SmartNest Proxy, you get a VPN and DNS chains that lets you watch content from anywhere in the world. As always, I'm Vamsi, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.